in 1620, the King of Sweden, Gustafus Adolphus II, decreed a drilling and grinding plant for musket barrels to be based in Japaking. Originally based in Japaking, the factory was moved to Husqvarna because a gunpowder factory had already been built there. The arms factory belonged to the government up to 1757 when it was passed into private ownership. The arms production continued, but in the middle of the 19th century, manufacturing of civil products started. The first products were hunting rifles and later sewing machines. In 1872, the first Husqvarna Viking sewing machine was delivered. Yeah, that's a little bit of a change there. Well, as you might have already gathered, we're going to be doing a little bit of bouncing back and forth between two workbenches today. And I guess I could probably start over by this machine once I get all the lights on, that is. Well, as you might have already gathered, this is none other than the Brothers Three. This is uh, brother number one, or I should say, brother B. <laughs> this is brother A. And last, but certainly not least, brother C. And these machines belong to Chris from Arizona. And as you might remember, Chris dropped off all three of these machines to the workshop. And the plan was that his mom was going to meet me somewhere south of here, probably about an hour south. And uh, I was going to hand these machines off to her, and then she was going to be making a trip out to see her son, Chris, out in Arizona. But sadly, uh, Chris's mom has uh, contracted uh, cancer and is battling some other health issues. So the plan has shifted now that uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pack all three of these Swedish beauties up and uh, get them heading out west uh, so that Chris can begin enjoying these resurrected Brothers Three. And he joked yesterday as we, we exchanged a couple of text messages, he said, thanks Scott for saving them from the dump. Well, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but they did require quite a bit of work, as you might remember. Um, just looking at this shot right now, the, the machine on the far right, uh, machine C, uh, needed some serious uh, deep cleaning and uh, some adjustments, quite a few adjustments actually. Needed a carrying case, needed belts, both the long and the short belt, needed a balance wheel, needed pads for the bottom because it was basically sitting flat on metal which when you're sewing the vibration factor is not a good thing 
<laughs> if you know what I mean. And then the machine on the left, uh, machine B wasn't quite as needy. Oh, and I should reverse a little bit. Um, the machine on the far right that you see in the shot right now is different than the other two machines that you're going to see in this premiere today. It's different in that it's a Type 21 rather than a CI 21. All of them are going to have almost identical features and benefits. Uh, internally, there's a couple minor variations, but all in all, they're basically a carbon copy of each other. And as uh, Hans and I were talking uh, about the nomenclature designations and stuff, he said, Scott, when you come over to visit me, you're going to understand the Swedes, they just have their own way of doing things. And uh, the best we've been able to come up with, and again, if anyone wants to reach out to either myself or Hans or Bill, and if you have greater insights, I welcome it. But apparently, the CI or the CL or the capital CL or whatever it is on the back of the uh, uh, nomenclature plates could signify nothing more than class, C-L-A-S-S. -S. But there's, there's debate and deliberation on that as well. So we're just going to leave that alone for right now. And I'm just going to tell you that the machine on the right is a Type 21, which is a lot easier. And the machine on the left and the machine on the other workbench are uh, CI-21As. All of these are uh, fabulous Swedish beauties, obviously. So what I was beginning to say is the, uh, the machine on the left, machine uh, A, uh, needed only a carrying case, long belt, short belt adjustments, deep cleaning, blah, blah, blah. And I, I say that very subtly, but how many steps do I have on my process for each one of these machines? 126 blocks that I need to check of going through this machine from bobbing the balance wheel. So when you add up all those steps between these three machines that belong to Chris from Arizona, you're looking at about 400 steps to bring these three machines to completion, to bring them to finalization. That's a lot of steps, almost 400 steps. Uh, but you know what? It's worth it because by the time I get to this point, and I turn the camera on and I begin to put these machines under the video microscope and give you folks a close and personal look at them as we're doing these sew-offs, I've got a high degree of confidence that these machines are going to deliver at the highest level. And all of these machines uh, come with a lot of the, the very coveted Swedish Husqvarna uh, attributes. And that includes... Uh, the jam-free raceway, uh, the auto clutch disengagement by putting a bobbin on, pulling that bobbin assembly uh, stem out and getting a slow gear that reduces the speed of the machine from full power all the way down to one-fifth. And of course, that genuine, authentic, incredibly made 1.5 amp uh, Swedish uh, sewing machine motor. Uh, I'll tell you one thing, that the motor is, I, I'm just in awe every time I go in and I do my service on one of these motors as to how these motors, and the rest of the machine for that matter, were put together. It's just utterly, it's a, it's a masterpiece. It's a masterpiece, that's the only way to describe it. So, uh, what I'm going to attempt to do in this premiere today, and I'll underscore attempt is I'm going to try to bounce between workbenches. And um, I don't know if I'm going to do like a dueling banjo going from one to the other to the other to the other. I don't know if I've got the endurance to do that or not. This has been a, a real busy couple of weeks, as I think most of you have gathered uh, by us talking or by you watching posts on Facebook. But... What I want to do is I want to be able to demonstrate for Chris through confirmation sew-offs that all three of these Swedish beauties are ready to get the job done. So let me pick out some music and let me see if I can get busy uh, with machines A, B, and C. And I probably should have put them in some sort of order instead of having A and C on this workbench and B over in La La Land on the other workbench, but it is what it is. So... Uh, let me see if I can pick out something to put on and we'll kind of we'll kind of begin to jump into this a little bit.
This one is uh, is called uh, Stuck in the Air. Sounds like somebody that's been on a long flight and they're having to circle the airport, but Stuck in the Air, and it's labeled Dramatic, so this should be pretty good. And for any of you, uh, for lack of a better term, any of you fuss buckets out there that send me nasty notes, uh, either by text or by email typically, and say, I don't want you to play music when you're uh, shooting uh, video and, and you're doing sew-offs on the machines. Well, I try to honor that as much as possible, but this is my channel, and I like music. So, there you go. All right, let's move over to uh, machine A first. I talked about starting on the other workbench, but here we are looking this direction already. Oh, and I wanted to highlight one other thing, and I didn't specifically talk about this, I think, on Facebook. But this is, let me zoom in real close, and hopefully we can, you can see kind of what I'm seeing. And you'll see this on uh, Facebook as well, and this is a good shot to start our sew-offs on anyway. Okay. So down in the raceway to hold the, uh, the hook and shuttle in is uh, a retaining plate like this. And it's a combination of metal and uh, kind of a polymer, almost a, uh, a Teflon type material. And uh, one of those 126 checks that I do and service points that I do on the machines is to inspect this piece uh, very, very carefully. And this happened to be in one of Chris's machines. And if you can't see it in this shot, you'll see it in the Facebook pictures, which I hope we have time to look at. Otherwise, check them out yourself. But when this is installed, it's installed like this. So the top of this is not visible. And there's a hairline crack all the way across the top of this, which eventually would cause a major failure and could actually result in serious damage to uh, Chris's machine. Uh, because that hook and uh, and uh, shuttle would basically break free. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Probably not. That uh, shuttle and uh, hook would basically break free. I can't tell if you can see that or not. You'll see it on Facebook. Uh, and it could it could do a variety of different things as far as damage to uh, Chris's machine. So this piece was replaced. Uh, didn't even charge the customer for it because it wasn't something that I anticipated. It's very rare to see these crack like this, uh, but it is what it is. So when I work on a project, unless there's something really extreme, um, I try to honor my original quote that I give to the customer. And uh, this was something that I just couldn't overlook. Now, if you go to a local sewing center, guess what? They're not even gonna pull that piece apart because they're gonna be not real comfortable and plus you're not gonna have the time or the knowledge on how to do that and uh, do it without throwing the timing off I just gotten a message recently from someone I think from all uh, from Iowa that tried to mimic what I had done through my Facebook still shots and they ended up throwing the uh, timing of the Husqvarna totally out of whack and I was able to walk through with them how to get that timing back into place but it took probably about you know through translation and everything else about an hour and 20 minutes to get it done but in the end I saved them probably 150 bucks which is always good okay so let me put some more music on because I just like talking <laughs> and what I've done and I'll just explain this real quick so that it makes some sense hopefully as I said on this workbench we have machine A and machine C. Machine A is on the left, machine C is on the right, and then way over here in La La Land we have machine B over on the other workbench. Because I've got three different cams, what I did is I put cam A in machine A, cam uh, C in machine C, and ultimately on the other workbench cam B in machine B. It just makes sense, doesn't it? So that way, between the uh, the decorative sew-offs on uh, these three uh, Husqvarna's that belong to Chris from Arizona, you'll be able to see the full scope of stitches uh, that these three cams will put out. At least that's the plan. Hopefully that's the plan. So we're again, we're starting with machine A. And um, 
I'm going to first of all do decorative uh, stitching on the machine, then I'm going to uh, shift over to machine C, and then machine B, and we're just going to be bouncing all over the place. So, uh, hold on a second. Put on a little bit of soft music, and let's get started. And hopefully, since I have two foot pedals uh, down on the ground here on this workbench, I don't end up pushing the wrong one. That would be just semi-embarrassing. Not to mention it would create a mess. <laughs> All right. So let's start by enjoying some of the decorative stitches on uh, Chris's Machine A. And again, this is going to be Cam A. Let me make let me let me make a couple of quick adjustments here and then we'll get going on this. And what I'm doing off camera is I'm taking the stitch length from uh, 4 all the way down to about 0.5 and then I'm going to take the stitch width and move it from 0 over to 4. So we're going to do this first stitch again on on all of these green machines the stitch that's going to be in position 5 on the slider where I normally start is always going to be a zigzag. So the first stitch we're going to put down uh, is going to be a zigzag. And with that in mind, as I'm reflecting now, with that in mind, I'm going to go ahead and move the stitch length back to four instead of 0.5, or well, we're going to have what looks like a mending stitch. So uh, here we go with Chris's uh, Machine A. It just doesn't sound warm and fuzzy, does it? I, I, why don't we say... Uh, Brothers 3A. How does that sound? <laughs> Maybe that works better. Okay, so here goes our first stitch, which is going to be a, a simple uh, zigzag. Here we go. All right. So let me give this a clip, and uh, we will continue to march on, because we have a lot. If I do all the sew-offs that I prepared... This is going to be, hopefully you used the bathroom and got a drink of water before we started this because it's going to be a long, long premiere, trust me. Even if I move diligently, which you already know is impossible based on how much I enjoy talking. So, Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to go ahead and uh, go to the next stitch, which is going to be stitch number four. Remember, zero out your stitch width from uh, four down to zero, then move your slider. And now, because we're going to be moving into the decorative utility realm, I'm going to move that stitch length from 4 all the way down to where I had it originally, and that is right around 0.5. So here's our stitch number 4 on cam A on uh, Chris's uh, uh, CI-21. I think that's the CI-21, isn't it? The A? Yeah, CI-21. All right, here we go. Oops, you know what I just did? <laughs> I forgot to move the stitch width back to four. So we're going to have a little straight stitch burst, and now I'm going to correct my mistake and move it to four, and now we should get the decorative output. Oh, my goodness. Like I said, folks, it's, it's a little bit more difficult when you're on camera, especially when you're managing the equivalent of three machines right now. So uh, hopefully you'll be uh, forgiving of that little error. And there's nothing wrong with a straight stitch either. So, But boy, is that a tiny straight stitch. Holy mackerel. It's so tiny you can barely see it. You can see it on the back side, but not on the front side. All right. So now we're going to do uh, stitch number three. Again, I'm going to zero out the stitch width. This time, hopefully, I'll remember to move it back. And this, again, is going to be stitch uh, three on cam A. And uh, let's see how this one, uh, let's see how this one looks. Here we go. Yeah, 
that's kind of a groovy one. I'd almost call that kind of a three point. You can kind of see it in the camera there as I am clipping the threads. It's kind of a nifty little stitch pattern. You can see the ones that we've already done uh, thus far. Well, I hope you folks are doing well. This has uh, just been a crazy busy time, which I'm very thankful for. Plus, uh, this Friday, as most of you know by now, we have the major contest coming to a conclusion at midnight uh, Central Standard Time where I'm giving away that Centennial uh, Singer 201-2. A lot of folks have thrown their hat in the ring for that. And uh, I've tried to put out reminders as well just so folks are aware of it. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Stitch 2. And I'm actually remembering to move my stitch width back to 4. Otherwise, we're going to get another straight stitch. All right, here we go. So yeah, if you uh, if you haven't entered into that contest yet, you still have time. It's already, you know, getting towards uh, around midweek, I guess. But there's still time to uh, potentially uh, throw your hat in the ring. So uh, take advantage of it. All right, again, stitch number three on Cam A. Here we go. It's always helpful to get your take-up arm all the way to the highest position. Especially on these Husqvarna green machines, they really appreciate it. Because of the engineering uh, design of these uh, Husqvarna green machines, uh, you actually will lock up that uh, bobbin assembly where all of that drive comes off the motor and goes to the main shaft and everything if you don't have that take-up arm at the highest position. So if you've got a green machine and you're struggling with launch, uh, make sure that that's not the issue. It's a real simple thing to fix. So you can see this is the one we just did, kind of my building block one that I like so much. And that again is uh, stitch number three, I think I said, or stitch number two. I'm trying to see. Stitch number two, I think, on, uh, on cam A. So, we're going to zero out, and we're going to go to our final stitch on cam A, and uh, let's see what this one looks like. And again, uh, no music on right now. Uh, listen to how smooth and silky uh, this uh, Brothers 3 Machine A, that's a lot to remember. <laughs> uh, just listen to how silky smooth it runs. Uh, none of Chris's machines ran silky smooth when they came to the workshop, but that's the fun of taking a machine out of the ashes, or as Chris said, taking it out of the dump. And uh, as I said to him afterwards, when he said that again, I said, yeah, we took it out of the dump, but now it's on the mountaintop. And that's what you'll see today in this premiere. These machines are at the top of their game, and they are strutting that Swedish beauty like no other machine in the world can do. All right, our final stitch on cam A. This is going to be stitch number one. And uh, here we go. And if you're curious, I've got the uh, foot controller down less than a quarter of the way. Honest to Pete. Yeah, less than a quarter of the way, it's just, just enough to give it a little bit of pep. Um, so we get a nice rhythm as we're doing that, uh, that decorative stitch. A um, lot of reserve power now with these machines. Um, I've had other machines come in that folks have had for a while. They never, never were professionally serviced. And uh, boy, oh boy, is there a difference once you do that. So these are all the stitches we just did on this particular uh, CI-21. Uh, this is obviously stitch number one up here on the top, uh, stitch number two, stitch number three, stitch number four, stitch number five. Again, in position five on all of the black cams, it's going to be a zigzag. And all of these are just absolutely drop-dead gorgeous. And if we turn it over, guess what? No difference. The lock stitch looks just as spectacular on this Swedish beauty. Just as spectacular. And again, whenever you incorporate needle swing 
Uh, and whenever you're looking at that lock stitch factor when you're fighting gravity, if you can deliver a stitch like that, it says everything about how that machine has been prepared. So I'm going to set this to the rear as a definite pass. Um, yes, I'm going to wipe off the bed. And a couple of you have sent me notes, which I really appreciate, and, and you've said, do you know what? If you didn't do that, it would drive me nuts. Um, I like to have the bed clean as well if I'm sewing with a material that kind of leaves little debris behind. So I'm glad I'm in good company, <laughs> and I'm not alone on that. Oh, you know what I better do? Um, I better go ahead and uh, move this back to a straight stitch so that when I go to do some heavy-duty sewing, and I'll come on in this shot a little bit, as I go to do some heavy-duty sewing, I don't all of a sudden launch into a decorative stitch on two layers of leather, which, you know what, this machine could do it anyway. But, uh, and I'll move our stitch length back to four, and I'll move our stitch width back to zero, and I'm gonna move our slider in case we decide to do any zigzags. I'm gonna move that all the way back to five. And just a real quick thing I'll point, if you're brand new to this channel, if you're brand new to Swedish Beauties, and I can't see because I have the screen turned the wrong way. Um, if you're brand new to Swedish Beauties, I'll just go over this real, real fast. Um, these controls on the front, which could be a little bit, they can look a little bit daunting, are not daunting. This is going to drop your feed dogs. All you have to do is just turn it uh, clockwise, and the feed dogs will drop, and then you bring it back counterclockwise and those feed dogs will pop back up. This is going to be your stitch width and that's what I each time I was going between the cam functions and moving that slider I would always move this to zero to recalibrate the mechanism in the back so that the slider moves more readily. You can manhandle it and force it uh, but it's not good for the machine so always when you're going from one position to another on your cam selector always zero out the stitch width. And then on the top, you probably can't see it because I'm further out, but there's a little silver tab, and that's for stop and start points on buttonholes. And then you've got stitch length here, reverse button, you've got needle position, and then you also have this slider to choose your cams, depending on what cam you have in the machine. And just another uh, public address announcement, for lack of a better description, if you have a Swedish beauty like any of these that you've seen this premiere today, Always make sure that if you're operating the machine uh, using needle swing, in other words, if you're planning on operating it uh, to do a zigzag, for example, always make sure you have a cam in the back of the machine because the cam is going to set the swing boundaries uh, so that that needle doesn't potentially go outside of the boundary and strike the needle plate. So always make sure you have a cam in the machine, okay? All right, so I'm zeroed. I'm all set on this machine. So I can't goof that up. Yay! <laughs> I'll goof something else up. I think that's why you guys love me is because I, I don't try to pretend like I'm perfect because I am not perfect. Let's see, what are we going to put on next? Put on a little bit more cinematic music. This is cool. All right, so let's bounce over to uh, Brothers 3 Machine C. That's this beauty right over here. They're all gorgeous machines, aren't they? And of course, you're not going to get it at a local sewing center. At least I've never, I've never, I've asked people multiple times to tell me if I'm wrong. Never had anybody say, you're wrong, Scott. But I always go over the uh, paint patina as well and, and try to really, you know, not just deal with the innards of the machine and all the mechanics, electrical, blah, blah, blah. But I also try to also restore the beauty and luster. I mean, it's a Swedish beauty. It would be almost sacrilegious not to do that. So... All right, so let's do some decorative sewing on this machine. And obviously, we're going to be on cam C since it's uh, uh, machine C. And let's see what we get on this machine. And hopefully, I've got these machines positioned in a way where my arm's not going to be blocking anything. I hope, hopefully, that's the case. Camera's so far over, I can barely see it. All right, I'm going to kind of lean into this a little bit. <laughs> okay, so again, we've got cam C and machine C. And let's see what kind of uh, stitching we get out of this machine. So off camera, what I'm doing is I'm moving my uh, stitch width over to four because our first uh, stitch 
Actually, our first stitch would have been something different. It wasn't in position five. Um, our first stitch is going to be a zigzag, so I'm going to I'm going to lay down a zigzag, and then I'll adjust the stitch length way down to accommodate the uh, decorative stitches that follow. All right, are you ready? All right, here we go. And this again is machine C with cam C. Here we go. It just doesn't take any time to buzz down, does it? It's so quick. All right, let's go ahead and give these a clip and I'll show you this once we get all the way through it unless we have something really exciting that pops up as far as a decorative stitch. Okay, so what I'm doing off camera right now is I'm uh, moving my uh, stitch width to zero so I can then move the slider from position five uh, to position four. Now before I forget, I'm gonna move my stitch width back to four from zero, and now I'm gonna move my stitch length from four all the way down to right around 0.5. And let's see what this second, uh, what this next stitch, I should say, which is gonna be stitch number four on cam C uh, looks like. All right, are you ready? And uh, here we go. And again, when it comes to uh, these stitch patterns, it looks like a little Christmas tree almost, doesn't it? Um, when it comes to these stitch patterns, there are recommended settings uh, in the book. Um, I seldom follow the book. I'm a typical guy. It's like asking for directions, you know? <laughs> so um, I kind of do my own thing. So um, when Chris gets these machines out in Arizona, uh, he may end up making adjustments on stitch width and stitch length and I've said this in multiple premieres, that give the look of the uh, stitch a totally different uh, appearance than what you're seeing on this premiere today. And that's a good thing, because it really gives you a lot more uh, choice. For example, on these three cams, uh, you're looking at basically five stitches on each cam. One of them is going to be a zigzag, so let's just say four stitches that are decor decorative or utility. Uh, so you're looking at 12 stitches between the three cams, right? 12 stitches. Um, when you look at messing around with stitch width and stitch length to refine or to modify the look of that stitch, you almost get into a, a realm of limitless choices. Uh, certainly a lot of choices. So uh, you definitely want to, uh, you know, feel like you can be adventurous. All right, so I'm going to zero out my stitch width. I'm going to move us now to position three on the slider. Move us back as far as stitch width. I'll leave stitch length the same as it is. And let's see what this uh, stitch number three, I'm double checking myself, stitch number three on uh, cam C uh, looks like. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, I've seen this one before. And obviously I I probably could modify it even a little bit more, but it's kind of like that little shell thing going down. Not a big fan of that stitch pattern, but it's cool enough. Okay, so let me clip, whoops, let me clip these threads. I wax the bed, so if you see the material all of a sudden disappear, it's because the beds are real slippery right now after uh, going over the machine uh, paint patina and stuff. So these, these are what we've done so far. I think they're all kind of nifty looking. This is obviously the first one, the zigzag in position five, position four, position three. And now we're gonna be moving into, oh, I'm sorry. And there's our lock stitch, obviously, no difference. Uh, I'm gonna now be going into position two, right? Yeah, position two. And before I do that, I've gotta make just a couple of quick adjustments. First of all, zero out stitch width. Move that slider, move stitch width back, and uh, let's see, let's see what we get now. 
This again is going to be stitch number two on uh, cam C. Here we go. And again, if you're new to this channel and you don't know anything about this material I'm using, um, this material is super stretchy. Uh, and I use it in part because I like the way it presents stitches, but also because it really challenges the machine uh, as far as uh, moving material over the feed dogs and underneath the presser foot. Uh, if the machine isn't running at the top of its game, uh, it's going to run into a lot of issues sewing material like this because as I've shown before on camera I can take this material right here you see that <laughs> it's like it's like bubble gum uh, but this is a leather topper on here so I like I love leather all of you know that uh, so I like the way it presents on this leather I like the way it presents on the rear of this as well even though it's kind of a elastic -y, nightmare type material um, when these machines have been properly uh, restored, optimized, um, they manage it very well. Other machines would struggle in a major way with this type of uh, material. All right, so I'm zeroing out stitch width, moving the slider to our final stitch, which is stitch number one on cam C. I'm actually remembering to move my stitch width back. Yay! All right, so let's do this final stitch, and then we're going to be jumping to the other workbench to... Uh, see what uh, cam b has on it as far as decorative stitches are you ready all right here we go all right i hear you speed it up scott speed it up that's about halfway that's about halfway <laughs> haven't lived until you've you've sewed on a Swedish beauty and had a chance to goof around with that 1.5 amps there are other people that have contacted me and said uh, uh, you know they bought one of those aftermarket 1.5 amp motors and uh, I already knew this but it didn't have anything close to the power that these Swedish engineered um, Husqvarna motors have so let me flip this. So these are the stitches that we just did on cam C. Obviously, this is our first one right here, a zigzag in position five. Then we did this one in position four, position three, position two, and lastly, position one. I, I love that position one uh, stitch on cam C, don't you? I think that's just a spectacular looking stitch. You could do a lot with that. And then if we turn it over, there's just no difference. Our lock stitch, I've got a goofy thread right there that's going to drive me nuts. <laughs> Give me a second. One more. How did you sneak by? There we go. Okay. I'll put this. Yeah, that's correct. So here's our lock stitch. No difference at all. That's obviously position five. The first one, first one we did with the zigzag. Position four, three, two, and one. And they're all absolutely perfection. So I'm going to throw this behind this Brother 3 machine number C. And it definitely is going to get a pass on the decorative uh, cam output of the machine. And like the other one, off camera, I'm going to move us back to zero. Move our stitch width, excuse me, our stitch length back to four. And then move our slider back to five so that we're ready if we want to do a, a zigzag on any of the sew-offs. Okay. I'm going to put on some music and get a drink of water because while you're casually, as, as it should be, while you're casually enjoying this premiere, I am burning a lot of energy doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to refuel real quick. This next one is called uh, Royal, and it uh, says it's a rock style, so this ought to be fun. Oh, yeah, I've heard this one before. All right, so let's move towards the other workbench i'm going to come out on this shot first and we can just uh, give a quick little clap if you will to uh, machine a and c that in my opinion did 
a fabulous job with the decorative output of their cams. All right, let's go over here. This is cam uh, B that we're, or machine B with cam B in it that we're looking at now. Let me uh, zoom in and it looks like our level is gonna be off. I'm gonna have to raise the tripod level a little bit. Hold on a second. This is a much higher workbench over here, so that kind of explains it. All right, hopefully this will work. Hopefully this will work. Okay, so what we're looking at now is machine B, can B. I'm gonna drink a little bit of water and then we'll continue to march forward. Well, I know that, <clears throat> excuse me, I know I've seen uh, updates on a number of states where I, I have customers or have friends there. Um, I think it was uh, Mississippi that just opened their gyms and they've got, you know, they got their restrictions. They've got their putting the equipment six feet apart and they've got people wearing masks and stuff. But I think that we're starting to see progress, aren't we? We're starting to see the, uh, the end of the, the light at the end of the tunnel as it would be. So that's very encouraging. Okay, again, I hope this works because I, I haven't tested this as usual. We're, we're shooting from the hip here, folks. Okay, so let me... Let's see what Cam B looks like. Let's see what Cam B looks like. And I'm gonna kind of look over my shoulder. Yeah, I think that'll work. I don't think I'm in the way at all. I'll move to the left just a little bit so I'm not. Okay, so what I'm doing off camera real quick is I am going to go ahead and adjust my, all I have to adjust really is my stitch width. I'm gonna move it over to four because the first stitch we're gonna do in position five is what? Yes, a zigzag, a zigzag. So uh, here we go. This again is machine B, cam B, and uh, let's see what we got. Every machine is, uh, after it's restored, <clears throat> is uh, it's not going to be identical to the other machines. Some have a little bit more uh, burst, and this uh, machine B is in that category of having more burst. So I'm really going to have to harness that foot controller uh, because this this machine wants to run away. It wants to run away real quick. <clears throat> The only problem with drinking water is it sometimes messes your voice up a little bit, doesn't it? <clears throat> that was a fun little song. <clears throat> Excuse me. A fun little song. Okay, so now off camera I'm moving our uh, stitch width to zero. I'm now going to move our uh, slider over to position four. And I'm going to move my stitch length all the way from 4 down to right around 0.5. Let's see what our next stitch looks like. Ready? All right, here we go. And you know what I forgot to do again? Yes, I forgot to move my stitch width back to 4. Oh, my gosh. All right, so we're going to have basically a clone of the other one where I had a little straight stitch run. And then we jumped into the decorative stitch off, which obviously was totally, totally planned. Uh, not. Oh, this is different. This is kind of, it's almost like a building block, but it's not. It's kind of a, a slanted building block. This is fun. And this is again Cam B on this uh, Brothers 3B machine. That's kind of fun to say. Almost like Yellow Submarine, isn't it? I don't think I have Yellow Submarine on my uh, royalty free YouTube uh, music that they give me. That would be a fun one to play. I would totally be into that. So beautiful, beautiful stitching. Even my weird little straight stitch, which is so tiny because it's like 0.5 on the end over there. So 
we'll keep marching forward and hopefully I get into a rhythm and remember to uh, change all the dials. But again, when you're in your house versus being on camera, it's different. All right, so I'm zeroing out my stitch width. I'm going to go ahead and move my slider to the next position, which is going to be stitch three. And uh, I'm going to move my stitch width back to four. So I actually get something other than a straight stitch. It's so small you can barely see it. And let's see what uh, stitch number three on cam B looks like. All right, are you ready? Here we go. In this one this is this is pretty cool this is pretty cool again de depending on what you do with the stitch length and stitch width you could get a totally different look than what I just generated but I think it's a uh, it's a pretty neat looking uh, stitch pattern all right you go back there cut that way too short I don't know what I was thinking there that one. It's kind of neat. What do you think? So let's keep uh, let's keep moving forward because I, I need to stay on track. I've got so much more to cover if I actually end up covering it. So I'm going to take my uh, stitch width back to zero. Again, this goes without saying, always make sure that your uh, needle is clear of the material when you're moving any of the controls on, on any machine for that matter. So now I'm going to go ahead and move our slider from position 3 to position 2. I'm going to move my stitch width back to 4 right away before I forget, again. <laughs> and now we're going to see what this uh, stitch pattern looks like. Again, position 2 on cam B. Alright, here we go. Oh yeah, this is one of my favorites. This is one of my favorites. I like this. I like this one a lot. Maybe maybe I'm alone, but I like this one a lot. I think this is a cool stitch pattern. All right, let me give that a clip here and there. Yeah, when I'm working between two workbenches, some of the thread just ends up going on the ground. This is the last one we just did right here, the one that I said I really like. It just has that kind of that hill, that waviness, or almost like a, maybe like a wave even on the ocean or something. So these are the ones we've done so far from bottom to top, which I think, uh, I'm impressed. I like, I like Cam B a lot. I think it's got some real good uh, uh, decorative stitch options. All right, let's get back into position. Taking my stitch width to zero, moving our slider to the final stitch, I believe. Stitch one on cam B. Moving my stitch width back. Yay, now we'll actually get a decorative stitch instead of a straight stitch, hey. All right, here goes our final stitch on cam B. All right, here we go. All right, faster, I hear you. Again, folks, I was about halfway. About halfway. Yep. <laughs> zoom! That's what we could call these. Instead of Swedish beauties, we could just say zoom! That's a movie. Yeah, yeah, now I'm thinking about it. The movie Zoom, you guys remember that one. The guy from that program that he does uh, home improvements and all that kind of stuff. I'm just totally blanking. Talks to the guy over the fence. You never see the guy's face. Type it in the chat if you know who that guy is. I'm just totally zoning out as far as who that is. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm going to move that back, move that back, move that back. 
Okay, so these are the stitches that we generated from cam B, and hopefully you can see those in the shot. The top row is uh, position 5. Again, position 5 is the same on all the black cams. It's a standard zigzag. Then position 4 is this nifty little leaning type uh, building block thing. Then we have this shell type pattern, and then we have this really cool wavy uh, mountain type stitch or whatever. And then we've got this really groovy three-point stitch in position one on cam B. So if I turn it over, no difference. The lock stitch is absolutely uh, picture perfect. And uh, again, you can generate a, a lock stitch of this caliber. Uh, even that horrible little straight stitch is somehow, I don't know how that happened. That's must be a must be a mistake, maybe. Uh, but it, it tells you how well that machine has been prepared. So, you know, if you ever decide to go out and just get a machine and you really want to test that machine, throw needle swing into the equation if it's if it's got that capacity, and uh, take a look at that lock stitch. It'll tell you a lot about how that machine has been prepared and how it's been uh, maintained. So I'm going to throw this to the back as a pass. And I'm going to do a quick wipe off on the bed. And I'm going to see if I can take us back over to the other workbench and give me a quick little break. We're going to be back over, uh, we just left uh, machine uh, B and now we're back to machine A again. And I'll throw a little bit of music on as an interlude while I grab a quick swig of water. I think the last one we just did is called Royal, wasn't it? Now we're going to do Claim Claim of Thrones, which is uh, labeled cinematic. I don't think we've heard this one yet. Oh, this is cool. This is cool. I'm liking this a lot. I guess I could leave the height the same. Remember I adjusted it for the other workbench. Yeah, why don't I do that? Then I don't have to keep going back and forth and back and forth. Okay, again, this is going to be uh, Brothers 3 Machine A. So uh, now we're going to be focusing on other types of sewing, heavy-duty sewing. And I think we will start with uh, Genuine uh, Elk Hide. And um, I guess I could do Elk Hide on each of the machines, or I could just buzz through. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but we'll see. Perfect music for Elk Hide. This is Elk Hide music, if there is such a thing. All right, and again, if you're new to this channel or um, new to uh, Husqvarna's, this is what Elk Hide looks like from the side. You're talking about probably about four ounces of chemically processed leather. And uh, when you chemically process a leather, it makes that piercing threshold go through the roof. So let's see how this Husqvarna does with a task like this. And I think what I'll do is I'll buzz down uh, with a straight stitch, and then I might lay down a zigzag next to it. And I've got another piece of, of uh, elk hide as well. I just I cut an extra one, so I had it. So Okay, so let's go all the way. I think one time I was doing a a premiere and I forgot to change the settings back and I ended up laying down a decorative stitch on Elk Hide, which is absolutely insane that I was able to do that but probably not I mean with my 126 uh, step process and if you include changing the needle 127 steps uh, you you expect some real high standards from machines okay so here we go with a straight stitch down this super tough uh, Elk Hide. all right here we go You just see me almost kind of lose control of it. <laughs> I thought, okay, I'm going to hit the pedal a little bit harder because I'm dealing with elk hide here. Uh, that was a mistake. That was a mistake, man. Because uh, 
this machine just doesn't goof around when it comes to getting the job done. Not even for a second. All right. I'll show you this as soon as I lay down the zigzag next to it, okay? We'll look at both sides of this uh, elk hide. So all I'm doing off camera is I'm adjusting my stitch width from zero to four. And let's see how uh, this Swedish beauty does laying down a zigzag with that needle swing going through a material like this. Here we go. Well, I, I think it did fine. I think it did like, was that even a real sew off? I think the machines laugh at me sometimes. I set up these, like I said before, I take quite a bit of time to prepare for uh, premieres. And uh, I really try to be thoughtful about not testing the max of the machine, but giving it a, a decent challenge. And I think these machines, especially after I go through preparing them, they almost kind of laugh like, yeah, like that's a challenge, right? So there's our top stitch. Uh, and it's absolutely spectacular. Uh, the spacing, the formation. Uh, below it is that zigzag we just, I'm trying to get this level, is that zigzag we just laid down. And uh, both of those top stitches are just absolutely uh, spot on, exactly as we want to see them. If we turn it over, is there, a, is there a dramatic difference? Like, oh my gosh, it looks horrible? Uh, no. The lock stitch looks just as spot on. Spacing, formation, the integrity of the stitch uh, is exactly as we want to see it. Exactly as we want to see it. I might, because I'm super persnickety, I might increase that upper tension just a tiny little bit to tighten it even more, but it's a beautiful stitch, as is the top stitch. So I'm going to throw this to the back uh, as a definite pass. And we're going to move over now to machine C and do exactly the same uh, stitch off. And I like that song enough that we just did. If I can find it, what the heck was it? Was that Claim of Thrones? Let me try it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ha, 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 ha. All right, let's go over to... Uh, Brothers 3 Machine C now, and we will do the same sew off. I don't know why I zoomed out, it just was kind of fun to do, so. Alright, I'm waiting to see if the camera's going to stop moving. Hopefully. Alright. So this is again Brothers uh, 3 Machine C, and we're going to be doing uh, genuine elk hide as we just did on uh, Machine A, and we'll see how this Swedish beauty does with this task. Oh, my settings are already set up. I'm spoiled. It's already ready. Yay! Okay, so let's buzz down with a straight stitch first. And then we'll lay down a zig zigzag next to it, just like we did on the other machine. You ready? Here we go. I love this music. That one's got a lot of kick, too. <laughs> a lot of kick. Oh, my goodness gravy. And as before, I'll do the zigzag, and then I'll show you both stitches. All right, here we go with the zigzag down the other side of this genuine elk hide. Here we go. Yeah, I know why the machines laugh at me now, because they just make it look... Like, it's not a challenge. And yet there are other machines out there that would unequivocally struggle doing this, especially making it look as easy as these two Swedish beauties have done. That's okay. I'm okay if they laugh at me, because that just evidences how well I've done in preparing them for the task at hand. So I'm looking up at my LED light right now, and I can't see, if, I can't see a thing. So I'm just going to move the material back and forth real slow. 
and I'm hoping you can see how beautiful those stitches are. That's our top stitch right there. Uh, the spacing, uh, the formation on the top stitch and the zigzag are exactly, exactly as they should be. Exactly as they should be. Absolutely spot on. Again, I just don't know if I'm a fan of these LED lights. They're nice and bright, brilliantly bright. Uh, but uh, they sure are a pain in the neck to try to see things sometimes, depending on where you're standing and all of that. So here's, I just flipped the material over. Uh, this is our lock stitch, and I'm just going to bend it a little bit again to remind you what we just sewed through. It looks like a belt, doesn't it? I mean, it literally looks like a belt. We just sewed a belt. And uh, everything about that lock stitch is just spot on. The spacing, uh, the formation... Uh, the integrity of the stitch, the presentation of the stitch, both for the uh, straight stitch uh, and the zigzag uh, are exactly as I want to see it, as you want to see it, because we both share the same high standards. I know we do. So this is a definite pass with uh, Brothers 3 Machine B. Uh, did a spectacular job. Beautiful lock, beautiful top stitch. I'm going to throw that to the rear as well. And now we're going to jump to the other workbench, and we'll put machine uh, B to the test and see how it does. And of course I've got to give it the same dramatic uh, music, right? I've got to give it the same music. It's only fair. It's only fair. <clears throat> and also sneak a quick drink of water. All right, let's jump to the other workbench. So this again is going to be machine uh, B, and if you see that slight little raise on the uh, extension bed, it's because I've got this partly on the AstroTurf underneath it and partly on the table. So it's it's not completely even, and that's okay. On a, on a regular flat surface, it would be uh, perfectly even. All right, let's lock it in place. See how the camera moves? It's like it's got its own little mind. All right, let's do some Elkai, and I better get myself going because I'm seeing that battery starting to drop. And I had it fully charged too, so maybe I need a new battery. All right, here we go, Elkai, machine B, machine B. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, again, genuine Elkai, and we're gonna lay down a straight and then a zigzag, just as we did on the other two machines. Here we go. See that? I started to launch, and I, I right away had to kind of pull back on the power, like, whoo, whoo. <laughs> All right, let me get that back into position. down a zigzag next to it and then I'll let you look at the stitches. All right, you ready? Here we go. If I get my foot on the foot controller. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> Chris, watch out for machine B. All of the machines are incredibly powerful, but machine B has just a little bit of extra attitude when it comes to launching. So as I've said before, put on your safety belt maybe your safety goggles and get ready for a little bit of action when you sit down to machine B. This is a, this is a hoot. All right, let's give these threads a clip and then you can look at how this machine did on this single layer of genuine Elkhide. Once I pick it up off the floor, like I said, these beds get real slippery once you wax them. So there's our top stitch right there. I'm going to move it back and forth a couple of times because right now, because of the distance of the camera, I really can't see the screen real, real clear. I'm zoomed in close enough for you to see. And once I uh, you know, have a chance to view this myself, I'll be able to see with clarity because it's high definition. Uh, but right now it's a little bit of a strain, so I'm going to go real slow. But what I'm seeing at the workbench is a perfect stitch. The top stitch 
Uh, the zigzag are absolutely spot on. Beautiful stitching all the way across. Beautiful. If I turn it over, no difference. Our straight stitch, our zigzag are just absolutely spectacular. The presentation, uh, the stitch spacing, uh, the stitch uh, uh, alignment, and uh, just, it, it, you know, the overall appearance of it is just absolutely uh, as we want to see. Gorgeous, gorgeous stitching. So machine B also is going to get a pass uh, on this uh, single layer of uh, genuine uh, elk hide. All right, so I'm going to throw that to the back. And uh, we are now going to jump over to machine A again. <laughs> We seem to be developing a pattern almost, don't we? We seem to almost be developing a pattern. So now we're back to machine A. All right, stay where you're at. Stay where you're at. That's a good place right there. Perfect. Yay. All right. So that's machine A we're looking at. And... Uh, Check my camera battery real quick. Okay, we're, we're still doing pretty good. We're still doing... I don't think we're going to get through all the sew-offs I prepared, but oh well. Okay, and like I said, I had an extra piece of uh, genuine elk hide uh, prepared, but I don't think I'm going to... I'm going to save that for another another machine because I don't think we need to replicate, replicate what we just did. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do full grain leather. Full grain leather is, uh, as you probably know, is the thick of thick. It's not easy at all to get through it. And uh, especially when you're talking about uh, doing two layers of this. I'll show you from the side what that looks like. That's two layers of uh, protected full grain leather. I'm trying to kind of pinch it a little bit, but... And if you've never sewn uh, full grain leather before, protected full grain leather in particular, uh, you'll definitely want to give it a go because it really, really will give you a new appreciation for either how well your machine runs or how poorly it runs, one or the other. Uh, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to lay down uh, a zigzag going down and then I'm going to, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll lay, I don't know, I, I might, I might adjust the zigzag or I might lay down um, one of the decorative stitches next to it, just to really evidence how strong this machine is. All right, are you ready? So here we go, uh, a standard zigzag on two layers of uh, protected full grain leather. I'm gonna bring my needle position up, there we go. All right, here we go. And I'm gonna try to keep it reasonably straight if I can. I didn't do such a great job, but I tried. A for effort. A for effort. Oh, okay. Good, good, good. This is a great lesson. A great lesson opportunity. You'll see what I mean. As you go between different material types, you sometimes do have to make uh, upper tension adjustments uh, because the material will respond differently. So the first thing I'll show you as I get my specs lined up here is the top stitch which looks absolutely spot on. I'll kind of go up and down so you can see it. So two layers of protected full grain leather, uh, a real good looking uh, top stitch which means that that bobbin case down below is pulling hard to define that stitch on top and giving us a real good looking uh, top stitch. But when we turn it over, you're gonna see a surprise in that the lock stitch is not well defined. It's actually out of balance. I wouldn't say it's utterly horrible but it's definitely not up to our standards. And this would require uh, one of two adjustments. It would either require that we take out the bobbin case and reduce that pull, 
or we can try to increase the upper tension to offset the bobbin case pulling too hard on this type of leather. And every material is going to react a little bit differently to how that uh, tension is balanced. So let's give that a try. I, I was debating what I was going to lay down, now I know. I'm going to lay down another uh, zigzag after we make a slight adjustment on the upper tension. And we'll see what impact we can bring. And during this premiere, I don't have a chance to, you know, I don't have a chance or time to reach in there, take out the bobbin case, rethread it, all that. Uh, but you know what to do if you need to make that correction. So that's important. That's an important thing as long as you have the solution. So let's see if we can make a slight adjustment, make an impact, and, uh, and then we'll continue marching forward. All right, here we go. Uh, again, uh, two layers of uh, protected full grain leather. We'll see if that adjustment I made on the upper tension helps us define that lock stitch just a little bit more. Here we go. Whoops. Get my foot all the way on. Definitely not going to get an A for uh, sewing the straightest, you know what I mean? Just not. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so again, starting on this side, why don't I flip it like this because then we can see the last stitch that we did on top. So here on top, you can see that even when making that adjustment on stitch length, uh, not a stitch length, excuse me, making that adjustment on upper tension to define that lock stitch more, we didn't adversely impact our stitch definition on this top stitch. And that's because that bobbin case is probably, uh, it probably needs to be adjusted down just a little bit. It's pulling a little bit too hard. Uh, and uh, so it's got enough reserve right now in pulling that we still have a nice, uh, nicely defined uh, top stitch. I think you can see that in the shot. That one stitch is a little bit lower, but that was our second second stitch, or second stitches on top, excuse me. I'm going to bring that in just a little bit more. I'm, I'm having trouble seeing it over my shoulder, and maybe you're having trouble seeing it as well. So Let's see how close we are. Oh, it looks great from up here. That's so goofy. I, I can't see it when I'm looking over my shoulder, but here it looks fabulous. You can see it clear as day when I get behind the camera. Okay. Yeah, there we go. So again, that's our top stitch. We made a, an adjustment on upper tension to try to make that lock stitch more defined through these two layers of protective foot grain leather. Let's turn it over and see if we made an impact. Oh yeah, we definitely did. So the bottom row is the first row we did, this row right here. Actually, I could use my laser. That would be kind of fancy, wouldn't it? Um, this bottom row is, and now my laser is going to die. Isn't that the hoot? So that's our, our bottom row is the first row that we did. And you can see readily that while it's, it's not totally messed up, it just doesn't have that pop. It doesn't have that definition. It simply doesn't. But then we adjusted that upper tension, and we brought a huge impact. Look at that top row now. That top row is just about where I would want it to be. It's definitely passable, but I would probably make a slight adjustment on that bobbin case and step back that uh, pull just slightly so that that upper tension then can dominate a little bit more, and we can get a better defined uh, lock stitch on that zigzag. I'm hoping you could see that, the impact that we brought, and it wasn't, it wasn't a huge deal. It didn't take, you know, a scientific PhD. Uh, we made a, a slight adjustment on that upper tension, and we were able to resolve uh, an issue as we made a movement from one material uh, to another. So with that with that adjustment and the outcome we got, I'm going to give it a pass on that second stitch off through two layers of protected full grain leather. I'm going to throw that to the back 
and now we're going to move over to uh, machine C and we'll try to do the very same thing. And I'm going to get a quick drink of water again. And we'll throw on a little bit of what's labeled as classical music. I don't know if it's going to prove to be classical or not. And it might be so quiet we might not even hear it, which is okay too. So, Okay, so let's move over to machine uh, C now. We're moving over to machine C. Brothers 3C. That's going to stay. Okay, let me get out my protected full grain leather and we will, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> we will try replicating the very same thing. We'll see if we have to make the same adjustment uh, on this machine. We may, we may not have to do it. So I'll get this into position. And we will try buzzing down on two layers of protected full grain leather on machine C. All right, take up armas all the way up. Okay, here we go. See, like I said, when you restore, when you restore a machine, the machines are not going to be identical. This one seems to have managed the material shift better than uh, machine A did. We could still resolve the issue with machine A, which is what your goal is. If you run into a problem, it's not the end of the world. You just have to try to know. You, you need to know. You need to be able to mitigate the problem and resolve it, which we did. But on machine. Uh, Machine C, I think we're going to be good to go. I'll show you here. This is our, uh, I'm trying to get my right angle here. This is our, uh, our top stitch, obviously. I've got my elbow on the table. I better lift it up or you're gonna, it's going to be real jerky. So I, I'm really impressed with the top stitch, the spacing, the formation. Uh, as with machine A, uh, machine C looks absolutely spot on and solid. looks really good. I'm going to lift it up. Give us a little bit better visibility of that stitch. And then as we turn it over, where we had to make um, an adjustment and a modification... I don't think we're going to have to do it on this machine. Machine C has seemed to manage, seems to have managed uh, that lock stitch and the material change better than machine A, as I've already said. If, if we kind of scroll back and forth, you can see nothing. I've got to lift it up again. My camera angle is just really weird. This is our lock stitch, and that looks much, that looks much better. It's much better to find without having to make that upper tension uh, adjustment. And that's not highlighting an issue with uh, machine A that something's faulty. It's just saying that machine doesn't manage things exactly the same way that machine C does. So I'm impressed with that uh, lock stitch uh, on machine C. I think we've got a keeper. And I might just buzz down as a verification and just do it one more time just to make sure we get uh, the same type of... Uh, result and again if if you're not you know not remembering what we're dealing with here that's what two layers of uh, protected full grain leather looks like not an easy task at all so let me buzz down again and we will lay down another zigzag uh, next to it uh, just so we can verify you know that we're getting the same result 
and it's helpful to Chris to know that, you know, even though all the machines go through the same 126 step process, they're not all going to perform identically. And uh, for some reason, uh, with this material change, machine C is managing it just a little bit better. And it could be an issue with the needle as well, because I didn't change the needles again on these machines. Which is great, because then you really, really see just how well they're running to get results like this. And I did all those pre-off-camera sew-offs. Yeah, I'm impressed. All right. <laughs> okay, so here we go again. Uh, machine C uh, with a zigzag going down two layers of protected full grain leather. Here we go. All right. Yep. I would say pretty close to the same results. Although there's a little bit, when we look at the lock stitch, you'll see what I'm seeing. Uh, there's a little bit of a wrinkle on one of them where it looks like we, you know, that, that bobbin pole at that point was yanking a little bit harder. And you can see just a little bit of a looseness uh, about, um, about that stitch. Okay, so let's look at this first. This is our top stitch. And uh, those top stitches are just absolutely spot on in every respect. The one we just laid down, uh, the one previously that we laid down as well, exactly as we want to see them. Spacing, formation, presentation of that stitch is outstanding. If we turn it over, I'm going to kind of flip it around. You can look at that um, top row, that's the second row that we just did, and if you look real close, right here, you can just see a slight imbalance right where my, uh, here, I'll use my fancy laser again, right here, right in this area right here, you can just see a slight imbalance where that bobbin thread uh, was pulling uh, up a little bit harder and just barely defeated that upper tension in balancing that lock stitch. I mean, all in all, it looks really good. But if you're looking for near perfection, uh, that would suggest that this machine as well, with this material change uh, for consistency, could benefit potentially from a slight uh, increase uh, in upper tension as we did with uh, machine uh, A. And that's, that's the deal with machines, is you're going to get consistent results when the machine is prepared properly, but there's always that, that possibility for an anomaly, for an ir irregularity as you're using that machine. So don't be shocked by that. Uh, a machine is uh, doing a lot of complicated things very quickly, and there is the possibility that once in a while it has a hiccup. So all in all, beautiful lock stitch. Again, that top row, I, I might look at just a slight increase uh, in upper tension uh, to get it to a point where it's going to perform even more consistently. So I'm going to throw that to the back as well as a pass. And we're going to move back over to the other workbench until we run out of uh, battery or run out of space or something. Uh, move back over to the other workbench and we'll do the same thing uh, over there on machine B. I had to look over my shoulder, machine B. Kind of keeping an eye on our battery so if you see me kind of rushing things it's, it's that's why i'm potentially going to start moving us forward a little bit more tempo okay so i'm zoomed in on that i'm gonna grab a quick little drink of water i won't throw any music on because i'm going to try to keep us moving forward and we will try the um, protected full grain leather on machine b both machine A and C managed it well with a slight upper tension adjustment, which is fine. Uh, we could have just as easily backed off that bobbin pole a little bit, but it's a lot quicker. <laughs> it's a lot quicker to adjust the upper tension. Um, but depending on how far you have to turn that upper tension, if you're all the way up in the realm of 
these uh, Husqvarna's go up to nine, and if you have to go all the way up to eight to uh, get a nice balance, then you're probably going to want to look at backing off that bobbin tension so that you don't have to go quite as high on the upper tension. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Let's see how machine B, or affectionately known as Brothers 3B, does with the same task. So I'm going to slide this underneath the presser foot. There we go. And we're already set on stitch width and stitch length and everything, so we just have to get that take-up arm up. And we'll see how this machine does with the same task. Here we go. I don't know if you can catch it on camera or not, but this, this machine just has a little bit more, honestly, it has a little bit more attitude, doesn't it? It has a little bit more attitude at launch. So, and I do the same uh, service on the motors, identical service on all the motors, but again, I've said this before, when a machine leaves the factory, uh, it's no longer equal. So I can take each and every machine that comes to the factory to its absolute highest level of performance, but the highest level of performance for one machine might not be as high as another, even though they've gone through the same very, very detailed process that I take these uh, Swedish beauties through. That's a beautiful stitch. I'm, I'm hoping you can see that. That's our top stitch right there. And I can't tell if you can see it or not. You know why? Because I have the screen facing the wrong way. Oh, galloping gumdrops. All right, here we go. So that's a beautiful, and again, I'm looking way across the room, so I'm hoping you can see everything. <laughs> Beautiful stitch in every respect. The spacing, the formation, uh, the integrity of that stitch uh, is exactly uh, as we want to see it. That's spot on. Spot on. I'm going to bring my light in a little bit more. Beautiful stitch. 